So Americans uh, across the board feel both in their own localities and more broadly across the country, crime is up and the numbers appear to bear that out. Um, something else from our Fox News poll today, people were asked um, th what kind of confidence they have in police and law enforcement, a great deal or a fair amount, 72%, not very much or none was only 27%. Brandon, um, law enforcement has taken such a bashing in the last year. What do you make of those numbers that sound like the vast majority of Americans still support you guys? But it's good to, to know that a vast amount of Americans have common sense and realize that police officers are the backbone of many of these communities. And, you know, law enforcement has taken a hit. It's a simple mathematical equation. As you begin to defund the police and you criticize them in multiple facets, you're going to lose good police officers. They're not going to show up to these calls. They're not going to be proactive policing. And crime in these communities is going to go, uh, it's going to skyrocket. And we've seen that unfold in our country. What do you make of this, Kevin? Because um, there was a warning, I think, by Ezra Klein earlier this week at The New York Times saying Democrats have to worry if these crime numbers don't get under control, it's going to open the door for this argument that you need somebody who's going to be tough on uh, crime, a law and order candidate, the kinds of things that President Trump himself uh, successfully campaigned on the first time around. Yeah, Shannon, at, at uh, minimum, uh, people want to feel safe in their communities, and Democrats and Republicans need to do a better job of addressing this. This is not just a problem for blue states or blue cities, uh, but for red states, purple states, and, and uh, other jurisdictions as well. When you see a rise, for example, in suburban, the suburban uh, arrest rate is now higher than urban uh, arrest rates in many uh, states in this country. It's a, a problem across the board, and any kind of messaging from Democrats uh, around defunding poli police is not just... Uh, a non-starter for political uh, means, but also a non-starter for really engaging communities and turning the tide on some of this violent crime that we're seeing on the streets of this country. Pastor, so much of the country feels so torn apart over very difficult issues. We've got these crime issues as yeah. well and, and law enforcement officers feeling um, that they have a really tough decision to make to show up every day, to wear this badge, put on the uniform. Um, we're hearing from a number of places that they cannot recruit or hire people, that they are losing hundreds of officers who are retiring early or leaving. Um, there seems like so much demoralization across the board for a lot of American constituencies. What do we do? Well, I think we have to address the faith component of all of this, Shannon. And uh, we're reeling here tonight in the DFW area over the mm -hmm. shootings in Flower Mound. And look, I think about uh, C.S. Lewis's quote. He said, most of the evil in the world, not all of it, but most of it can be traced to men with guns, bayonets, uh, gas chambers, and bombs. I mean, it's not the weapons that are the problem. The ultimate problem is what the Bible calls sin. And the only ultimate cure to sin is a relationship with God that offers a cure to the hopelessness, the hatred that fuels so much of the violence like the act we saw today in California. And you know, Shannon, for the last 70 years, secularists have tried to tell us that as a nation we can be good without God, that we can divorce morality from spirituality. That doesn't work. We desperately need God. And I hope today's atrocity in California will be another reminder of that. Yeah, Brandon, I mean, you've been out there on the front lines. Uh, have we lost this idea of respecting life uh, for what it is and being able to look at each other and think we're created in the image of God and that everybody has value in their lives? Yeah, I want to say a big amen to the pastor and, and that, you know, it's 100 percent true. I think that we need to find our way back to God and, and and really get deep in our faith and pray and be able to observe one another as God will see us. And that's really what changed my life. When I got saved, I stopped looking at color and, and all of these other non-factors and started looking at everybody and saying, look, at the end of the day, you're a child of God and I'm going to respect you as such. And we're all in the same boat fighting for the same purpose. And if we can get back to that and stop running on this division with race, um, whether or not they're dividing us, if somebody gets a vaccine or not. I mean, all of the division that's coming from the government, if we can get away from that and come back to the center and say, look, let's work together. We all want our country to be great. And um, we, we could do that effectively. But we do need to center that around God. Kevin, lawmakers derive power many times off, off of division, off of fear. It happens across the political uh, spectrum. Can, can we do better? 
Absolutely we can, and I, I, I want to echo both uh, the, the officer and, and the pastor's uh, points on this, that there needs to be uh, faith uh, communities driving a lot of that, but we also need to look at secular responses as well in terms of what the government can do. So surging resources in terms of training, recruitment. Uh, I saw some statistic that saw 400 officers, for example, in the Metro Atlanta Police Department have resigned uh, in just the past mm -hmm. year. That's a huge problem just for that city, but it's not just relegated to the city of Atlanta. We're seeing that across the board uh, with police communities. So uh, you have a president that I think believes, as uh, many uh, folks not in my party uh, uh, believe, that we need to surge resources to the police. And I think you're going to see a president doing that in the coming days and weeks uh, as a response to some of these mass shootings that we're seeing. Quick final word to you, Pastor, to close us out. Well, I think there is political division. The new Fox News poll shows there's great division in our country right now that has become poisonous. We're always going to be divided, but we can do so without hating one another. And I think those of us who preach the gospel have a responsibility right now to call our nation back to God. Yeah, and we have to respect each other, regardless of our differences of opinion right. over any number of issues. Um, just some basic respect for each other and for life. Uh, gentlemen, thank you've got you a all united, so much. You've Good got a see. united panel tonight. Yeah. I know. <laughs> On what's right. important. Thank you so much. And I have a feeling much of America is as well. Thank you all.